So I cracked the frame of my F4I. You're probably wondering how'd that happen? These things are tanks. I don't know, but I did it. And uh, here's how I fixed it. I cracked the radiator mounting tab off the frame. You know, this is the exact piece that was there and it was a perfect fit back onto the frame the shop that i talked to said to weld this properly i would have had to bring the frame in off the bike and i'm really not trying to do a full tear down frame swap type thing in the middle of the season right now i mean this little piece i mean there's not a lot of surface area there i could have tried to get somebody just to weld it for me quickly i didn't want it to break again whatever keeps me on the bike the most is the solution i want to go with so what i ended up doing was making my own bracket. I took a tube square of 16 inch steel and then cut myself a right angle. Drilled into the frame there. Uh, that's an M6 1.0 bolt. I just drilled a hole probably about a half inch into the frame, tapped it. I've got a flat washer, one of those star lock washers on there as well, plus red Loctite. This thing is solid, it ain't going anywhere. We'll see with riding how well it holds up, but that's permanently in place and that takes place of that nub there. On the right side, normally you have the nub there that the radiator hooks onto, which is kind of how the OEM fashion is. It's a hook on this side and then you bolt the other side. That's how I had it, but ground that nub off and then drill the hole. So we're bolting in through the cage on the radiator on both sides this time. When you do drill into the frame, you're gonna have to take your front wheel off unless you have a shorter drill you can't really get the right angle to be flush onto the frame here um, i'm not even perfect too that's why there's an extra flat washer in there and that i actually took to the grinder a little bit and angled to compensate keep that in mind even with the front wheel off uh, the forks get in the way so if you choose to mount it somewhere else um, you can probably avoid that but that's what worked best for me i also bought a new radiator this is my oem radiator and this is the new one right here uh, just on eBay, an OEM one. The only reason I did this was to find one with tabs that align better to this part of the cage. This one on the right was kind of bent out of place, like the radiator is kind of pulled up there. It never aligned into the cage properly because you have threaded holes here and here. I could get this one in fine, but this one would never align. Now they're a lot straighter. And I also took out the bushings that were normally in these rubber uh, gaskets, I guess. I don't know what you'd call these. The only reason I'm doing that as well is because you can't get the fitment perfect. You end up cross-threading these threads no matter how you try and line up the radiator in this cage with these bushings in. Uh, basically, the diameter of this is a lot tighter than the diameter of uh, these tabs on the radiator, so you have a little bit more free play when you're putting the bolt through to mount it and getting it to line up straight into here. I'm using washers, kind of the same diameter of these bushings on each side. This side has a spacer. You'll see the way it looks mounted in final position, how this side's a little different using that new bracket. Washers on each side here to kind of give it some firmer surface area. You have the frame in between, and then here you have the bracket that I put on, my own custom spacer, so you have something solid in between uh, to keep everything square. But that's pretty much it on this radiator. So for the fan setup, the one thing I changed was I took the OEM fan and put it on a switch instead of running it on the temp sensor so i have my r6 fan on the switch and this on the switch all you do is take the blue power wire that was in this plug here and that'll go directly to your switch panel and then the temp sensor is no longer hooked up that's just taped off i used the same spade connector that was on this wire that went to here and ran a green wire to the frame as my ground and then this plug no longer has that power pin it just has a single pin for the ground that comes off the wiring harness when you plug the wiring harness back in here um, that black wire comes here grounds out this so that fan is all grounded you got power there this ground i put on a quick connect to the r6 fan just so it's a little bit easier so i don't have to get to that bolt i can just unplug the plug and now we have two fans on a switch as well new radiator better lineup better fitment two bolts instead of a, just hooking on this side and then two fans on a switch so hopefully this thing runs a lot cooler and then i'll just show you the final mounting setup once it's in so you can see what hardware i use as well so i want to go over the final radiator setup here because there were some changes I did have to make after the last clip in terms of fitment issues. Basically, if you go back and look at the old original setup for this radiator, how I had it hooked onto the nub here and bolted in on this side, the way it fit on the bike was a little different. The cage on this side, because it wasn't bolted in, it wasn't even with the radiator, so it sat lower, and that changes where this R6 fan bracket mounts in regards to the frame. Now that it's bolted in to the radiator tab, and it's all in line that raised up where this fan bracket is the other part of the bracket on the r6 fan had trouble clearing this part of the frame so i had
had to grind away part of that bracket to get it to clear. And then this piece here, normally it would go towards the inside of the cage and then it's on the outside of this part of the bracket. But I retapped the holes and changed the orientation to give me some clearance as well. This way it can stay actually straight up and down instead of having to be angled a little bit to clear. Typically this hose had some issues um, in the old fashion where I had to rotate it so I could actually get this on. No more Allen bolt there, just a regular bolt. Um, it's a lot easier to get a wrench in there now in that tight of a space to tighten things down or loosen. And then I had to go with an M12 bolt because I messed up the drill size for the tap. I was gonna do an M10. I misread the chart, drilled too big. I had to go an M12, so it's kind of ridiculous. It's a huge bolt for there. This was the other thing I had to do was grind down this part of the bracket because now that it is on the outside, it's a little bit too far forward as opposed to whatever that eighth inch of it being behind there would give clearance for the fork. So before it was ground down, basically you have your fork stop on the frame there and it was just missing that stop like maybe a papers thickness difference but it still was hitting the radiator and if i'm locking the bars to the right for tricks and i happen to you know drop the bike with them locked i didn't want it to bang the radiator every time i came down so basically i just took the dremel and ground a bit away on that bracket so now when the uh, fork comes in it doesn't touch there's actually clearance there that's what i had to do in terms of fitment there like i said it's bolted in on both sides now you know it's not hanging on the radiator so hopefully that keeps the tabs and the radiator as straight as possible i feel like the fan the oem fans a little close to the headers that might be how it was originally but i don't have any good footage to check i don't really remember so this is just more for my reference here, I guess, to look back on. I don't think it's an issue, but that's pretty much how this new radiator is set up. We got the fans going, we got the R6. And we got the stock. Hopefully she runs a lot cooler now that I got both running. That's the new bracket there. We'll see how that all holds up. Like I said, no bushings on those tabs. I mean, this thing is, I'm shaking the whole bike right now. It's pretty solid. I did a couple wheelies, dropped them. I'll keep an eye on it. Yeah, that's uh, how we fix the radiator. So I got that far, I torn apart right now. I've been dealing with this bog issue for a little while now. Before I swapped radiators, I kind of noticed it a little bit when I would go and clutch up from sit down and jump in a seat stander. It would almost bog out on me mid jump or even sometimes in circles and I thought sometimes maybe it was just when I clutch up I roll off the throttle but if you roll your throttle tube forward you can almost drop the rpms and I thought maybe that was I was subconsciously doing that and that's what was causing it but even after I changed the radiator it's been much more noticeable where it'll probably happen maybe twice a session usually kind of after I take a break or right at the beginning if I'm below like 200 like right around 190 I'll notice that I'll clutch up in the circle and it like bogs out like a one two and most of the time I would just kind of like panic break and set it down but this last time I kind of just let it go fought through it and kept the circle going but I really don't like that happening because especially with combos like having it bogged down on you or you know I'm trying to do a circle and it bogs high sides me uh, it's not really great so I posted it on Facebook to see and a lot of people said throttle bodies so I popped those off and some of the insulators were a little bit like rotated in there and one of the vacuum lines is kind of coming off I don't know if that's enough to cause that issue basically what I'm going to do is get in there, twist the throttle body insulators back to where they should be, and then get all the vacuum lines secured. And I think I'm gonna cut the ends off just so they have fresh tips to kind of secure on anything that's cracked or dry rotted, maybe air is getting in there. The other thing I noticed is with the idle too, is that I run it at 4K. It'll be steady pretty much at 4K, but if I run it at 3000, which is kind of what I do when I load it up, it just kind of fluctuates up and down, but go to 4K, it's fine. 3000 all over the place. And I have an old video probably like way back before I started started riding where it was steady right at like any RPM. Uh, so that's kind of a big thing too. And like during the last sessions, every time I drop the bike or something like that, I start it again. It's always a little bit lower than 4K. So I have to constantly like reset it, which is kind of annoying to do. So the bog, the idle fluctuation, hopefully once I get these kind of cleaned out, put some oil around the insulators when I reinstall them, get the vacuum lines secured, chopped, checked, hopefully that uh, eliminates it. Because a lot of people did say that stuff shifted after pancaking and what caused the 
brain to crack was a bunch of pancakes right before that. So some of these insulators, this one on the end and this one were the two that were off. They're supposed to line up in the notches there. I really don't know if that makes a big enough difference. Like that one's good, that one's good. And I already fixed that one. You can see that one vacuum line. There's a little bit of like brass sticking out right there. If that's enough to cause an issue, maybe that's what's doing it. I'm gonna pop them off, chop the ends, get some nice fresh ends to uh, secure it too. Throw a little bit of motor oil on these insulators and they're probably clean out around here while I have the opportunity to. And this has been like this since I've put these quick disconnects on from the six shop was this fuel line has a little bit of a tear right here. You know, I don't know if this is even enough to cause some issues. I mean, the barb is all the way down here. I tried to pull this off in the beginning when I was putting these on and this thing would not budge. I'll probably buy a whole set of new vacuum lines, maybe a new line of this just to replace over the winter too. Those are a couple of things that maybe could be causing this issue.